Oh, about the whole crew here. There we go, gang. Right over there. I brought uh, Brian Davis a whip with us. Uh, he was on the dais and he can give some explanation of what he his vantage point. So I uh, thought we had a good day. We end up with a, what 106 votes, Brian. 106. Um, and as we promised, and the majority leader promised, we uh, started out bipartisan. We're continuing. And uh, the fact that we gave uh, only seven committees that we kept to be special committees, I think it's a long step. And we're letting them appoint their members, and we haven't seen all of them. But, you know, we're doing everything we can. We've given them parking places. We've given them extra help and better seating and different offices. Anything that they've asked for, I think Steve and I have been pretty uh, good about uh, honoring their requests. So, uh, Steve? No, I, I mean, I, I would agree with the speaker. You know, uh, when he was uh, took his oath and, and was sworn as speaker, he committed that we were going to work together in, in, in a bipartisan fashion because we felt like the challenges that, that face the state warranted, and that's what the people expect. And the first step to do to do that was the rules. And if you look at the rules that we have this General Assembly versus the rules that we've had in the past, we've given the minority more power, more power for the minority leader to appoint committees. We've, we've changed it to where they we can't hijack their amendment and turn it into something that they didn't intend it to, so they'll be able to withdraw it. So you look at everything that we've done. I mean, I made a commitment not to not to bring up a bill to shut off amendments and, 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 and not give them ample notice to distribute their amendments. Every step, we move towards their direction. Now, you can combine that with what they're doing in Congress, where the Democratic Congress is limiting the minority's ability. And we felt like that was the wrong direction to go. Uh, Ron set the course and said this is how we want it to be, and 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 uh, I think today showed that uh, the Republicans aren't just talking about bipartisanship, we're actually uh, working on it. And so uh, I was glad to get uh, a pretty solid 106 votes. That means we got some Democrats that uh, felt, as we did, that we went a long way. Uh, did they get everything they wanted? No, I didn't get everything I wanted, uh, but I certainly felt like we went beyond the middle, and I was glad to see that some responded, especially some of them uh, of the senior members, like uh, former, you know, former representative and budget chair Chris Kelly, and now Representative Kelly, uh, that uh, that we talked about the rules. So uh, I was happy with the vote. Would have loved to seen it been unanimous, uh, but uh, you know, that's where we are, and I'd be happy, to, Brian. Well, I was just encouraged today to see that uh, on this day, January 15th, 2009, uh, both the uh, tongues in our shoes and the tongues in our mouth lined up today between Democrats and Republicans. Of the members that were present, we had a two-thirds majority vote on these rules. And so what I've taken note of is that, you know, we in the majority party, the Republican side of the aisle, we've made it a point to make sure that our tongues in our shoes match up with the tongues in our mouth when we say that we want to be bipartisan. And uh, we've been waiting to see if the Democrats would uh, would respond in like manner, and today they did. And we're very encouraged by that, and we're just uh, hopeful that that trend will continue. We have done everything we can to make things fair for them, yet still remain in control. And uh, today was just a very encouraging outcome to see two-thirds of the members present vote on rules. I don't think that's ever happened uh, since I've been here in these six years.